Sustainable developments are becoming increasingly popular as the world is transitioning now towards sustainability. The demand for a higher quality of life as well as the need to address environmental challenges are also fueling uh, the shift towards livable cities. And that's quite exciting because there are many aspects to what makes a city livable. But what makes a city livable is also very much tied to the built environment. Livable cities are essentially uh, people-focused cities. It is cities that really understand that the health and well-being of people are influenced by the quality of the green spaces within their cities. Green spaces are essentially the backbone to livable cities. Although the livability of a city are driven by various aspects that influence the quality of life, but I would say the urban plan and the way a city is designed, and in particular the landscape design, has a greater influence on the quality of life. I think the landscape is not just the backbone, it's actually the blood that pumps life into a city. And I believe that the emotional bond that people develop with places is also highly influenced by the quality of the landscape. Landscape design can provide many opportunities. They can provide various environmental, social, as well as economic benefits. The landscape can manage stormwater. They can increase social interaction and connect communities together. The next generation of sustainable cities are using nature as multifunctional natural systems. And this is complemented by green as well as blue infrastructure. That is quite exciting because the landscape itself should always be the heart of cities. Making the landscape the heart of cities, you are also at the same time creating a carbon sink and minimizing the carbon footprint. Yet at the same time, you're also promoting a healthy living environment and also enhancing local air quality. So there's many uh, benefits that comes with integrating as much green space within cities. A landscape that is integrated with car-free strategies as well as alternative modes of transport uh, will also help reduce carbon emissions. So uh, the design of a livable city can also be optimized to also increase the portion of green space and that can be done in many different ways. So you can do it through optimizing the urban planning strategies, things like density, land use distribution, mobility, building typologies. So all of these things will help to increase the green space ratio. And I think that these cities will have a larger portion of the land area dedicated to open spaces. The next generation of sustainable cities will also look at retaining and enhancing biodiversity. They look at enhancing the resilience, the livability through many different unique landscape environments. So things like rain gardens um, and bioretention areas are very low maintenance and yet they require no irrigation. Uh, yet at the same time they're able to reduce a large volume of runoff. Uh, whilst yet at the same time creating habitats for different wildlife, birds, butterflies and many different types of insects. So it's this holistic approach to integrating green space. And of course, low maintenance landscape is always key here. So in this region, obviously, xeriscape and drought tolerant planting will obviously offer the most significantly less water consumption. The landscape is important because it can also help to create a cooler community by lowering peak temperatures within the city, as well as mitigating the urban heat islands. A great landscape has multiple uses. Good landscape can connect residents with various hubs within the city, yet at the same time serving as more of an educational tool. So they can integrate and highlight 
all the sustainability elements within the city itself. So it becomes more of an edutainment city. Ultimately, the landscape plays a key role in creating livable cities and we should understand the value of landscape.